The QB1 NMES device is indicated for strengthening the quadriceps muscles and increasing knee range of motion. This device is intended to be used under the supervision of a healthcare provider. It is important to read the QB1 user's manual safety information, including warnings, precautions, and contraindications prior to using the device. Take the conductive garment with post-operative brace out of the box and sit on the floor or chair with the injured leg extended. Place the garment underneath the leg with the hole position behind the knee and the blue surface under the thigh. Wrap the garment around the top of the thigh starting with the inside thigh panel. Loosely secure the three wrap ends on the thigh portion, then the two wrap ends on the calf portion. Bend the knee and make sure the pivot axis of the brace aligns with the knee axis of rotation. Adjust the brace up or down the leg as needed to align the rotation axes. Verify that the brace bars are roughly midline on the leg and not positioned to the front or back of the leg. The brace bars should be positioned on the inside and outside of the leg as shown. Tighten and restrap each wrap end to provide good compression on the leg and to prevent slippage of the brace. Starting with the brace strap near the ankle, position the ankle pads midline on the leg on the inside and outside of the leg. Detach the strap connection on the outside and pull tight around the back of the leg and reattach the hook and loop connection. Pull the strap over the top of the leg through the plastic loop connection and then fold the strap end back on the strap to secure it. Make sure the strap is tight to minimize slippage of the brace. Repeat this process for the other three straps. Stand up and bend the leg and walk around with the brace to assess the fit and adjust as needed. As part of your rehabilitation process, your physician may indicate that you should keep your leg locked in extension. To lock the brace in extension, fully extend your leg and engage the slide lock on both sides of the brace. Depending on your injured knee flexibility, you may need to push on the brace gently to get into full extension. Line up the tapered end of the slide lock between the white lines on the brace and push the slide lock down towards your ankle until it is fully seated. Repeat this on the other side of the brace. To disengage the slide lock, pull the slide lock upwards until fully disengaged. Repeat this on the other side of the brace. The postoperative brace also has the ability to restrict the range of motion of the knee. Always follow the guidance provided by your physician when adjusting the range of motion limits. To adjust the limits, rotate the hinge dial towards flexion and the locking disc will pop out. Dial the disc to the appropriate flexion limit and push the disc back in until the dial releases the disc. Next, turn the dial towards extension and the locking disc will pop out. Dial the disc to the appropriate extension limit and push the disc back in until the dial releases the disc. Turn the dial back to the lock position to prevent unintended rotation of the hinge dial. Make sure to repeat this process on the other hinge as well and always make sure to set the same limits on both hinges. To remove the range of motion limits, reverse the setting process. Rotate the hinge dial toward extension and pick up the locking disc. Dial the disc to minus 15 degrees and push the disc back in until the dial releases the disc. Rotate the hinge dial towards flexion and pick up the disc. Dial the disc to 135 degrees and push the disc back in until the dial releases the disc. Turn the dial back to the lock position. Repeat this process for the other hinge. Take the conductive garment out of the box and sit on the floor or a chair with the injured leg extended. Place the garment underneath the leg with the hole positioned behind the knee and the blue surface under the thigh. Wrap the garment around the top of the thigh starting with the inside thigh panel. Three NMES electrodes are used in the conductive garment, the rectus femoris, common, and vastus medialis or VMO and are pre-positioned on the inside thigh panel. During the initial fitting, make sure that the electrodes are properly positioned for your leg anatomy. The VMO electrode should be positioned towards the inside of your leg just above the patella or kneecap. Straighten your leg and flex your quadriceps muscle and palpate the VMO muscle. Verify that the VMO electrode is positioned on top of the VMO muscle belly. The common and rectus femoris electrodes should be located approximately midline on the thigh. Make sure to avoid any overlap of the electrodes and that spacing between electrodes is at least one inch. The electrodes are adhered to the conductive garment. To reposition the electrodes, peel the whole electrode from the conductive garment and adhere it in the new location desired and press down firmly. The wire can be tucked back into the exit hole to remove any excess wire length. Once electrodes are positioned appropriately, tighten and secure the three wrap ends on the thigh portion and the two wrap ends on the calf portion. When ready to apply the NMES stimulation, wash and dry the skin and apply electrode gel to the electrode areas on the skin. 
For best results, you may want to trim any leg hair as well in the regions of the electrodes. Do not apply stimulation to recently shaved or broken skin. Open the conductive garment and remove the electrode covers from the top of the electrodes, exposing the sticky hydrogel surface of the electrode. The electrodes should be tacky and stick well to your skin. If the electrodes are dried out or not clean, replace them with the spare set of electrodes provided. Make sure to keep the electrode covers. They can be stored in the user interface pouch for convenience while applying the stimulation. While closing and tightening the conductive garment, verify the appropriate position of the electrodes and secure the strap ends to apply good compression to the knee and calf areas. Turn the power on to the user interface by sliding the on-off switch to the on position. The information button may be pressed to display the user interface hardware and software versions. The user interface screen will notify you to connect the user interface to an accessory. Attach the user interface cable to the conductive garment socket by aligning the logo on the connector and the logo on the garment socket. The user interface will display the available NMES treatments, post-op, and strength. Select the treatment prescribed by your medical professional. On the stimulation level screen, you set the intensity of the stimulation levels for the knee and thigh areas. Each level begins with a setting of zero and has a maximum setting of 100. In the knee area of the screen, press plus to increase knee treatment intensity until a strong but comfortable muscle contraction is achieved. When you hit the plus sign, electrical energy will be delivered to the quadriceps muscle, which some have described as feeling like a vibration or low-level buzz. Press minus to decrease knee treatment intensity as desired. Repeat this process for the thigh area until a strong but comfortable muscle contraction is achieved. The stimulation will oscillate between the knee and thigh areas. Note that it is common to have different intensity levels for the knee area and thigh area. Once the knee area and thigh area are set, select the start button to begin the treatment program and the 20 minute countdown timer will begin. You can press the hard pause button at the bottom of the user interface at any time to pause the treatment. Hit resume to resume the treatment. During treatment, the user interface will transition between periods of stimulation and periods of rest and will indicate when stimulation is active. The yellow symbol in the top right corner appears when energy is being delivered to the electrodes during the work period. The gray bar indicates that no energy is being delivered during the rest period. You can continue to adjust the stimulation intensity with the plus and minus signs as desired. You should only make adjustments during the work period. During stimulation and to protect the user interface from various home-related hazards, the user interface can be placed in the user interface pouch. For convenience, the user interface pouch can be attached to the conductive garment. At the end of the 20 minute treatment, the user interface will stop the stimulation and display a treatment complete screen. Turn off the user interface by sliding the on off switch to the off position. Disconnect the user interface cable from the conductive garment by squeezing both sides of the cable connector and pulling away. To charge the user interface, make sure that the on off switch is in the off position. Charge the user interface by plugging in the micro USB connector of the wall charger to the micro USB port. Plug in the wall charger. A blue LED light should be seen by the battery icon on the user interface to indicate that the battery is charging and should turn off when the charging is fully complete. Make sure to reattach the electrode covers to the electrodes after treatment is complete to keep the electrode hydrogel surface hydrated and tacky. The electrodes should last for many uses before they become dried out and need to be replaced. To replace the electrodes, peel the electrodes from the conductive garment and gently pull the white wire out from the hole. Detach the white electrode wire and reattach to the new electrode wire. Remove the hydrogel liner cover from the tan side of the electrode exposing the sticky hydrogel. Stick the electrode back into the appropriate position. Push any exposed wire back into the wire hole in the garment. Remove the TENS pod and TENS electrodes from the box. Attach the two TENS electrodes to the skin in the locations of pain as prescribed by your physician. For best results, you may want to trim any leg hair as well in the regions of the electrodes. Do not apply stimulation to recently shaved or broken skin. Remove the electrode covers from the top of the electrodes exposing the sticky hydrogel surface of the electrode. The electrodes should be tacky and stick well to your skin. If the electrodes are dried out, replace them with the spare set of electrodes provided. Make sure to keep the electrode covers. They can be stored in the user interface pouch for convenience while applying the stimulation. Plug in each pin from the TENS pod into each one of the electrodes. Turn the power on to the user interface by sliding the on-off switch to the on position. 
The user interface will notify you to connect the user interface to an accessory. Attach the user interface cable to the TENS pod by aligning the logo on the connector and the logo on the TENS pod. The user interface will display the TENS treatment button. Press TENS button to confirm. On the stimulation level screen, you will set the intensity of the stimulation level. The level begins with a setting of 0 and has a maximum setting of 100. Press plus to increase treatment intensity until desired. When you hit the plus sign, electrical energy will be delivered to the electrodes, which some have described as feeling like a vibration or low-level buzz. Press minus to decrease the treatment intensity as desired. Once the intensity level is set, select the start button to begin the treatment program, and the 30-minute TENS countdown timer will begin. You can press the hard pause button at the bottom of the user interface at any time to pause the treatment. Hit resume to resume the treatment. You can continue to adjust the stimulation intensity with the plus and minus signs as desired. At the end of the 30 minute treatment, the user interface will stop the stimulation and display a treatment complete screen. Turn off the user interface by sliding the on off switch to the off position. Disconnect the user interface cable from the TENS pod by squeezing both sides of the cable connector and pulling away. Make sure to reattach the electrode covers to the electrodes after the treatment is complete to keep the electrode hydrogel surface hydrated and tacky. The electrodes should last for many uses before they become dried out and need to be replaced.